Hello, this is from Milwaukee to Nashville. Uh, I'm Daniel Goodwill, and I have my friend John Lewandowski here with me. Uh, Chris is out sick, so we're going to be covering the Admirals yep. and the uh, Cleveland Monsters. I will also catch you guys up on the Ottawa Senators and the Nashville Predators game that I missed the other day due to me being sick. Mm -hmm. As you saw, now know, all of Milwaukee and Nashville was sick. Andy has the stomach flu, Robert has asthma respiratory infection, and my friend John here, who fills in when people are sick, had a had bronchitis. So <laughs> everybody was sick. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone had something. So uh, first off, let's get into that Senators game, just so I can get that out of the way. Uh, shots were 34, oops, sorry, 37-24. Uh, Face-off percentage was 55-45 uh, Nashville. Uh, shots were 37-24 Nashville. Nashville was 1-for-2 on the power play. Senators were 2-for-4. Uh, Nashville had 8 minutes on the penal eight penalty minutes uh, on uh, 4 infractions. Um, Senators had uh, 4 penalty minutes on 2 infractions. Uh, 26 hits for the Senators, 18 for the Predators, 23 blocks for the Predators. 21 for the Senators, and 13 giveaways to the 12 of the Senators. Um, now, I might I add, <coughs> had they not scored the game winner on the power play, I'd have actually been mad. Because if we'd have lost at even strength to the Senators, I would have been pissed. Right. <laughs> um, so scoring in the first period was Craig Smith with his fifth, uh, with an assist from Kyle Turris. Craig Smith's been lighting it up over the last couple weeks, uh, last couple games. So, good good to see. Uh, then we had, holy crud. We had Colin White scoring for them, his third, with an assist from Chris Tierney and Barowiecki, uh, his ninth. And then uh, Vladislav Namstikov, his eighth, with an assist from uh, Jean Gabriel Peugeot, his ninth. Um, and then Artem Anisimov with his sixth, with an assist from Tyler Ennis and Ron Hainsey. I didn't even know Ron Hainsey was still playing. Yeah, I was just about to ask you that. Um, and then we got Brady Kachuk scoring in the third period with his 12th with an assist from Peugeot and Duclair. Uh, that was Peugeot's 10th and Duclair's 8th. That was also on the power play. Then Rocco Grimaldi scored his 6th, um, as I call him, the Italian Grim Reaper. He's speedy, swift, and strikes when no one expects it. Good hard hitter, too. Yep. Um, and then we got Matt Duchesne on the assist with his 14th and Ryan Ellis his 21st. Uh, Duchesne's been getting on the assist tra see, uh, part of the board, but not the scoreboard so much as far as goals. He needs to get back in that area somewhere. Um, Ryan Johansson scored his 8th of the year with an assist from Ryan Ellis and Matt Duchesne his 15th, Ellis his 22nd. <coughs> and then Roman Yossi scored his 11th unassisted, and then in the po uh, in the overtime, Anthony Duclair scored his 20th of the year with an assist from Shabbat, his 19th, and Kachuk, his 9th. Now, with this being said, that you know most people would think that Ottawa would be a cakewalk, not at home. At home in the last 10 games, they are now 9 and 1. So, that's enough to be said about that. Um, as far as tonight's game, where John will be able to elaborate more, compared to sure. me doing all the rambling. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, statistically, the Admirals played a solid game. Um, shots in the first period were 9-5 to five Milwaukee. Uh, shots in the second period were 17-12 to 12 Milwaukee. And then shots in the third period were 5-15 to 15 Cleveland. You get 15 shots in one period and you don't get any of them in. Right. Also, I really like that our power play killed off six, six penalties tonight. Penalty Cleveland kill. 0 for 6. That's just that's amazing for us. Yeah. Our, our, and, and it's also nice that we broke that 15, game, 15 uh, penalty skid. Of our power play not scoring because right. we had it gone on 15 power plays without scoring. So right. our penalty kill did a great job. Uh, One for three tonight. Yep. Uh, scoring in the first period was Mika Salamaki, um, as we all call him, um, that know him very well. His nickname is Salty. Don't know why. I haven't really asked, but I will eventually. 
I'll come back with an answer on why. Um, and then we'll go with Alexander Carrier for his 17th assist of the year with an assist from Anthony Richard, the birthday boy. Happy birthday, Anthony Richard. That was his third assist, right? Yes. Um, if you want to take the next step, you can. If you have, uh... um, yeah, scoring uh, still in the first at 9:49, Rem Pitlick with his eighth, Jared Chorney with his fifth assist of the year, and Carrier with his 18th. Um, and then we have in the second on the power play, unassisted Tommy Novak. Um, Novak took a pretty nasty hit in the at the end of the first period. Yeah. <coughs> As you can see, I'm still trying to get over this. Um, and then scoring in the third, Anthony Richard, his 10th, with an assist from Alexander Carrier, his 19th, and Connor Ingram, our goalie, his Where first. You go. um, three stars of the game were uh, Alexander Carrier with three assists, uh, Connor Ingram with 32 saves and 32 shots, and an assist. Um, and then, obviously, first star of the game was with a goal and an assist, Anthony Richard, the birthday boy. He should have been second star, but that's just my personal opinion. Viewing from a stat point of view, three stars of the game are supposed to be the highest rated stats, not right. the whole feel-good moment. But I understand it. Um, it was really good to look at the stat sheet and see all the admirals. Uh, in the plus minus, um, in the plus category, or, or even. even, yeah. <coughs> um, the the Michael Propa Vesis uh, for uh, Cleveland was the only O for or the minus two. In net for Cleveland was Matthias Kivlekins. Good God, help us if that other guy ever played. His name is Vinny Velalainen. Ugh. Um, our attendance at the UW Panther Arena was 4,050. Uh, game length was 2 hours 17 minutes. Uh, referees were Kenny Anderson and Mitch Dunning. Uh, linesmen were Julian Fournier and William Hancock. Um, going forward, in the last five, the Admirals are 3 and 2. It's been kind of a weird bounce for the Admirals lately. Uh, looking at the standings. Also, for those of you who didn't know, Yakov Trenum was assigned to the Admirals late this afternoon. Did not make it in here in time for the game. Nope. Um, looking at the... Let's get the league standings up here. <coughs> league standings. First place team is the Milwaukee Admirals with uh, 31 games played, 22 wins, 4 losses, 3 overtimes losses, and 2 shootout losses with 49 points. Yeah, they, they that long win streak where they set the franchise record and surpassed it, and that really helped us this season. I think definitely having um, kind of a mini rebuild and now that the coaches... Um, have been there more than a year and are all on the same page. There's been a lot of good bench communication, you know, communication between the coaches. They, they got something special going on in Milwaukee. Um, the other thing I would like to say is it looks like if somebody's going after one of our younger guys who's not really much of a fighter, guys like Tenorti, Olivier, Olivier Juno, you know. um, those guys are stepping up. To protect the smaller players and everything. Yep. That so we're very good to see. It's also good to see when you have like a veteran guy who right. who may not be old, may be getting there up there, and you know he'll play the physical game, but yep. may not be the scrapper he once was. Right. Guys like Donovan who will hit you, but they ain't much of a fighter. Right. <clears throat> um. You know, you'll see guys like Tenorti and, and stuff like that step up for him. So, it is a good thing to see. Uh, in second place is the Tucson Roadrunners. Yeah, I heard they got off to a hot start. Looks like uh, Rochester's got off to a hot start as well. Yeah. So, every division is off to a hot start except for ours. <laughs> yeah. 
literally seem to be blowing away. I think it's what Iowa maybe. Uh, well, looking at the cod. Well, let's go divisional looking here. Looking at division, Rockford's in second with thirty-five points. <coughs> Iowa's thirty-four. And they have three games in hand, which gives them six points, which would put them at forty-one if they won out. So even if we lost the next three games, four right. games, we're not going anywhere. Right. You know, so we built ourselves a really solid cushion to where, I mean, if you look at it, the only teams in our division with a winning record is Rockford, Iowa, and us. That's it. Yeah. Everybody else is like, the Moose have played 31 games. They're 14 and 17. I was really shocked to see the Moose and the Texas Stars this year in the position they're in this late into the season. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just not used, even with the Rampage, with as much as they get, they get from the Blues all the time, you know, because the Blues aren't that far out from their rebuild, so they still got young talent there, right. and it's just like they don't produce. <coughs> Same um, thing. And all, all the one thing that the one there are two teams in this division that scare me, and they're creepers, and that's going to be Chicago and Iowa. Yeah. Because they just seem to be hanging in there. Yeah. Um. I mean, it's always great when uh, you've definitely been recognized. The Admirals have, I know, in the past as being one of the top farm teams in the NHL, and uh, I mean it shows. Yeah, you know, and uh, fans like us, we put in our due diligence with this team because oh, yes. <laughs> we uh, we are very happy when 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 we're able to say, you know, guys like Pekka play graced our presence. You know, right. we got to watch him. Haverly, Pekka, Upshaw, Tutu. I you know, mean, Shea Weber, Ryan Weber, Suter. Right. Yeah. Uh, you know, Forsberg. You, you know, Phil Forsberg, not Peter. Because right. if that was the case, it'd been a little weird. <laughs> yeah. But we got graced with Tony Herkus in the nineties, right. Ken Sabrin, who leads the Admirals in all time penalty minutes. I mean, I'm just saying, you know, we got the luxury of seeing a lot of good hockey here in Milwaukee and a lot of people downplay the AHL for being a second rate league. It's not at all. <clears throat> Some people say it's the best league in the in the world because you you get to look forward to what's to come. It's nice. Yeah, um, I mean, we, here's the thing, if this is what the Preds have to look forward to, we're looking at a pretty solid next few years for them. Then. Yes, and even if they do have a down year in the NHL this year, that's fine. Right. You know, um, I mean, I understand, Peck is towards the end of it all, and we all want that cup for him. We want that cup for him, you yeah. know. But if he doesn't get it, it's not the worst end of the world. There are a lot of great goalies who made the Hall of Fame without that cup. Oh, yeah. Future Hall of Famer, indeed. So, like, that's where we're looking at now. Um, I did have an announcement to make. Carl Taylor is now the official head coach of the Central All-Star team. Oh, very nice. With, uh, with that win on Wednesday, we clinched highest points going into January. Like, no one was going to be in the Central was going to be able to pass us. Is it uh, still possible that we could have over a 90-point season if we continue at this pace? Yes. And that's weird to say. I, I actually cracked a joke. If we continue at this pace, we'll be clinched by February. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, from the ECHL, get up there and learn how to play. <laughs> We're, they're going to be rotating guys in and out for rest. Um, but no, the one team that's been kind of lurking at me a little bit, and I've been looking at it, is uh, the teams that are the hottest right now are Rockford. They're eight and two in their last ten. Um, we are seven three, or seven one and two, um, and then we got Texas, who is seven two and one in their last ten. So Texas is actually starting to light it up. Yeah. So I'm a little surprised that Texas is there. I wouldn't be surprised if they stay there because they just lost two in a row again. Okay. <coughs> and they've already given up 100-plus goals. Ooh, not a good stat you want to see. The Admirals have 109 goals scored versus 70 against. Right. Which is the lowest in the division. 
the uh, lowest in the league is 66 for the Tucson Roadrunners. Right. I mean, I love how our coaches give an opportunity to both our goaltenders at all times. And um, it's great to see. It's great for the game, I think. It also gives um, Ingram time to grow as yeah. a goalie. Um, instead of riding the pine and, and every three It gives games. him that game time experience that you need to grow. Um, and, you know, believe it or not, I wouldn't be surprised to see him and Saros on one-two tandem in the future. I don't see Troy going up. I, I, as much as I like Troy. And he's, been, I, they, he's been great when they've needed him. You know, and that's the thing. He's been great when Nashville needs him, but... As far as a consistent NHLer, he's just never been there. So I don't know if he can do it, but I would like to see it. Yeah, um, that would be great. I will say that, you know, giving Ingram an additional year, say this is Pax's last year, they do take Grossnick one more year, kind of let Saros take the helm as starter. And, right. And, you know, whenever they need Ingram, call him up, send, send Gross down. But I think Troy would be content just playing the rest of his career in Milwaukee. Right, right. right. Hometown here. <coughs> he loves it here. He's from here. Um, you know, there's not much to be left there. Um, up next for uh, from Milwaukee to Nashville is the Boston Bruins versus the Nashville Predators. Um, Boston has a, well, let's get into their standings real quick. If I remember correctly, they're first in the league. Let's make sure you're still going here. Audio is good. Sorry guys, every once in a while, just gotta check your audio stuff. You never know with technology these days. Yeah, sorry you can't see us, but yeah, everybody's been battling colds and stuff, so... Uh, I figure it's a lot better than coughing on the screen and everything. You know, you're all seeing us hack all over yeah. you. All right, Boston's first in the Atlantics with 30, 36 games played, 21 wins, 7 losses, 8 overtime losses. They are on a two-game overtime loss streak. They are 3-4-3 three, and three in their last 10. Um, Where Nashville is 5-3-2. Lost in overtime in their last game. I kind of like how I'm sitting here looking at this, and like everybody from the central is like in the right top. Right there. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, this is get. This is always the toughest spot to win. <coughs> My surprise right now is Minnesota. Um, I've been really shocked with how they played so far this year. Um, Nashville does have two games in hand against them and a game in hand against Winnipeg. Um, with that win, they would bump to third and bump Minnesota out. Well, technically, if they won the two games, they would get up to uh, Calgary. Which Calgary's Calgary seems to have built something around, uh, is it Brady or Matthew Kachuk? Oh, uh, Matthew, Brady's in... Brady's in Ottawa. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they seem to have built around him really well. The only problem is is that when you do that, you kind of make your guys like Johnny Gaudreau and them feel... Not as appreciated as much, right? Yeah. All right, so your goaltenders for Boston are Tuka Rask. No, we're all not a... We're no stranger to Tuka Rask. No. Tuka's been around for a while. Heck of a career. He's also been one of the most... He, he was one of the original memes. Believe it or not, when hockey, he was one of the original hockey memes. When they first started with yep. memes, it was him. Um, when uh, when the Blackhawks beat him and they said he, they took up my cup. <laughs> I remember that one. Yep. So he was one of the original hockey memes. Um, uh, but all joking aside he's uh 13 4 and 5 with a 0.922 save percentage and a 2.29 goals against average he also has two shutouts uh then we got euro halak yaroslav halak's been a goalie pretty much my whole life i've watched euro halak play with montreal <coughs> with that being said that was like in 2006 <laughs> yeah so he's one of the longer state goalies. 
He has eight wins, three losses, and three overtimes losses with a 9.28 goals or 9.28 save percentage. If he had 9.28 goals against average, God help him. Yeah. <laughs> um, he has a 2.26 goals against average with two shutouts and an assist. Um, as much as I don't like their a couple guys on their list, let's see what we got here for the stats this year. Guys to watch out for, obviously. One is Brad Marchand, number 63 mm-hmm. over there. You, yeah. If you don't pay attention to him, he will make you pay. Um, he has 33 assists, 18 goals. Uh, that is This is actually their first line. You have Patrice Bergeron with 11 goals, 17 assists. <coughs> he also has 17 block shots. Um. And then we got David Pasternak with 28 goals and 22 assists. Uh, outside of that, your other guys you're looking at is David Krejci with 17 assists and 7 goals. Charlie Coyle with 6 goals, 11 assists. And that about wraps it. David Backus is not the hockey player he used to be. Um, your top defensive guy is the Deno Chara. He has, it's amazing that he's been in the league as long as he has, and he's still playing good. As with as big as he is, right? You know, because he, he's six nine on skates. Yeah, that's insane. You know, that's just nuts. And you you, you put him with a young talent like Charlie McAvoy with twelve assists. You got Tory Krug with 19 assists and 5 goals, so he's leading the way defensive, defensively with Brendan Corleo with 8 eight assists and 3 goals. And their third line isn't really much to bark about. It's more bark than bite, if you get what I mean. That's their grit line, but they are not known for their penalty minutes. In their last 5, uh, Brad Marchand has uh, 5 assists. Patrice Bergeron has two goals and an assist. David Pasternak has three goals, two assists. Uh, Anders Bjork has uh, two goals. Uh, uh, Tori Krug has a goal and four assists. And Charlie McAvoy has three assists, but I'm probably pretty much guaranteeing that came on the power play. Yeah, that power play line of him, Pasternak, uh, Heenanen, Patrice Bergeron, and Brad Marchand. And then the other power play line of Jamie DeBrisk, Charlie Coyle, and David Krejci. Um, and then you got Matt Greslick and Charlie McAvoy. I wasn't McElroy. even aware they picked up Charlie Coyle. They traded for Charlie Coyle a couple years ago. Good hockey player, highly overrated, underrated. Yeah. Uh, big skilled, gritty guy. Kinda reminds me a lot of Ryan Johansson. Yeah. Um. So going forward, um, I know we got one more. Uh, game Monday. Before then. Uh, before the uh, holiday break. So, uh, Monday, the Predators, I believe, play. Come on. Rotate. They play Coyotes. The Coyotes, they're, I believe, probably at home, too. Yeah, Bridgestone Arena, 7 p.m. Okay, yeah. So they're playing the Coyotes at home. Um, it'll be nice to end things at home after this East well, Coast it, swing. Well, look at here. Yeah, that's at home. That's the Tuesday one. Uh, the Monday day after. Monday. Oh, I'm looking at the wrong week, aren't I? No. Uh, yeah. that would be the twenty first. So that's the rest. You're looking at what was Wednesday's oh, okay. game when okay. they played at Nos, not the so Nassau. I, I got the Coyote one right. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, they have a nice little thing going where you can have a holiday party at the Renaissance Nashville Hotel afterwards. Nice. And then they, the 27th, they're going to have a Winter Cup 
classic celebration and at the Renaissance National Hotel. So they got a nice lot, little bit of stuff going down, going on down there in Nashville. Um, for the Admirals, our next game is the twenty eighth at home. Uh, we play the twenty. That's our next home game. Our next game is the twenty seventh in Grand Rapids. Yes, and we have a three and three. It's Grand Rapids in Grand Rapids, then Grand Rapids here in Milwaukee, and then we have them down in Chicago. Yes. So, um, a three and three, I'm never a fan of those. I think it wears down your team yes, a lot, it but it builds chemistry amongst your team a lot. Right. Um, this will be time where you probably see guys going up and down uh, between the ECHL and here just because they're going to want guys who are rested. Yes, they are. So there's going to be a time where you may see Troy back-to-back -back nights or Connor back-to-back -back nights. Yeah. Um, just so that you know, whoever had the least work, the lightest workload, it's going to make it a lot easier on the on the team. So uh, this has been from Milwaukee to Nashville. I'm sorry, I forgot. Brought to you by the wonderful folks at Hockey Locker, 2002 West Howard Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Get all your wonderful hockey gear over there at Hockey Locker. Um, you can give them a phone call at 414-800-7585 or visit HockeyLockerMilwaukee.com. This has been from Milwaukee to Nashville Hockey Podcast, covering everything admiral.